Hey, welcome to this lesson on Java server pages using Enterprise Java. Let's take a look at the app that we're going to build in this tutorial. You can see I have a simple data entry form. I'm just going to ask for a first name and a last name with a submit button and pay close attention to the uh, URL at the top of the page. If I click submit, I get a message that said hello with my first name. I see that your last name is Sluter and then it says I hope you have a fine day. Now, the URL at the top reveals that we're using what's called a GET request in our web page. And so the first name is a parameter and the last name is a parameter. So let's go through the code now and see how to create this simple app using Java server pages. If you don't see this perspective, you might have to go to perspective, open perspective, choose other. And let's see, we are looking for JBoss default. And so this will allow us to get the dynamic web page that we're looking for. Open up web project. So for this assignment, we're going to call it assignment two. And I'm going to put a name after it. It is a JSP test. Okay, so I'll put JSP. I'm going to choose the defaults on everything else and choose finish. Okay, I need the Java EE perspective. Please open that for me. And now the environment should look like I expect it. Okay, let's go see what is inside this assignment two. We have ourselves here the usual folders for a dynamic web project. A couple of things we're going to pay attention to is this folder called web content. We're going to create some pages in here and also in the Java resources. Let's start with the Java resources. Inside the source area, I'm going to create a new package. So right click and create the package. And let's call this assignment two. And uh, maybe, so assignment two looks like a good one, finish. Okay, so now we're ready to create our first um, app. Let's start in the uh, web content area. In the web content area, I'm going to choose a new JSP file. So this file is going to be my index of my site, index.jsp. Now you can see that when we create this uh, page, we have some default code, which is a nice start. We have these funny looking uh, begin coding tags, the percent and the at symbol. What we're going to do on this page is create a form an input form. So we need to work inside the body. So how do you type in a form for HTML? So let's go and do a, a search for input form HTML just to refresh our memories. So this first page here gives us a nice HTML form example. As a matter of fact, we have first and last name. Let's do a try it yourself button and we can start by looking at the code of how this works. So we have a form action equals some page, first name, input type. This all looks good. So I'm going to copy the code here and bring it back into my coding editor. So we'll have to make some changes to it, but this will avoid some errors in case we forgot some HTML things. So form action equals. So this action is going to be different. I'm going to delete that for now. First name, name, Mickey, everything else looks good. So this form should display properly if we run the app. So let's save these changes and let's right click on this index page and let's see what it looks like in the server. So we run as the server and finish and we should see a web page come up. Okay, so you can see that the web page is launched. We can type in our name Mickey Mouse if we wish or change it to our own name and we click submit and we have nothing happen. So we haven't programmed the page to do anything. We just made the page show up. So, so far, first good step. Let's close this and let's go create the destination of where the action is going to lead next. So our action is going to be a Java class. So inside of the Java area in the assignment two, I want to create what's called a new servlet. Now, servlet is the other part of the uh, original dynamic programming. Let's give this thing a name. It's called a handle, um, handle form input. And let's click finish. Okay, so now you can see inside the assignment two package, we have ourselves this new Java class. And what is it supposed to do? This thing handles some methods such as 
The key ones are do get and do post. So you might surmise that this class is designed to handle web page requests. So when you click a form, you either do a, a get or a post method, and this uh, class is handling those uh, requests. So we've got the, uh, the name handle form input.java. We can go back into our index page and now tell it which class is going to listen to the click on our submit button. So we're going to put in handle form input. And uh, we're going to use the uh, method equals get. Now this form method has some code already built into it. So if we get a get message, we're going to hopefully print a response to the page. So let's see what the default code does. Let's run the index page again, and we'll submit a request. Okay, so we have Mickey Mouse now. I click Submit. And now the uh, handle request form is being um, called. I have a first name and a last name parameter, and it does say it was served. Okay, we're a little further along. Let's close this, and now let's modify this response to use the uh, first and last name. So, we're going to work inside of the get method here. We're probably not going to want to uh, reply with the default message. What I need, though, are two variables. So I'm going to create a string, and let's call it first name, and the next one is last name. Okay, so I've got these two variables here, first and last name. I want to get those from the, the variables that were passed from the form. So that is called a request dot and we should see get parameter somewhere in there. Okay, so get parameter, and it says which parameter. So we're going to manually type in the first name parameter. Now where did that come from? If we look back in our form that we created earlier, the name of the input form was first name, and the last name input form is called last name. So that's our uh, parameter name. So let's copy that and paste it. And we'll change this one to last name. Okay, so we have now two variables that come from the get request. Now I just want to print them back to the screen. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do here is we're going to generate another request and direct the web browser to another page. So I'm going to use a command here called request dot so I'm going to type in get request dispatcher. Okay. And then I'm going to put in the name of the next page that's going to be sent to the web browser. And then I'm going to type in a command called forward. And it says uh, what arguments are you going to send to the next page. And so when we forward it, I want to forward the requests object and the response object. So I didn't just invent these things. These come from the documentation. What is missing is the um, name of the next page. Or let, let's call this thing a response page. Dot JSP. Okay, so now a response page needs to be created and we need to um, put some variables into the request so that that page will get the first and last name. So let's do is request dot set set attribute and so now we're going to be passing attributes like the uh, attribute for the first name and the value for that is going to come from this variable up here first name with a capital n in it no quotation marks since it's not a quote it's not a string it's a it's a variable okay so the other uh, variable is the last name so let's do the same idea request Dot set attribute, and we want to set last name, and then the variable for the last name. All right, it looks like we've got everything we need here now. So this will um, get the first name, last name parameters, and resend them to the next page. So this thing is basically like uh, just a handler. It, it receives a request and forwards it off to something else. 
So now we need to create the response page. So this thing is going to be called response page. I'm going to copy that and let's create a new page inside of our web project. So a JSP and let's use the word response page.jsp. Okay, so once more you can see that we're creating a web page. So, so down here in the body we want to print out our greetings. So we're going to say hello and then I want to have a percent sign and in here I'm going to try to print the uh, first name of the person. So how do I do that? I don't remember. And let's put the rest of the text in here. Um, it appears that your last name is Okay, so that's my text. Now, how do I get the parameter for first name? So I'm going to use the uh, custom open tag uh, with the bracket percent equals, and then I can type in request dot get attribute and the word first name. And so that will resolve from the uh, the variable that we pass to it. So the same thing for the last name. So let's put an equal sign and then type in requests dot get attribute and this time a last name is the parameter name. So let's go back over to the index page and start there. Let's run our page and put in something into our form and then see if we get a response. So I'm going to put in my real name here, Shad Sluter, and push submit and it looks like we have ourselves the message. Hello Shad, it appears that your last name is Sluter. I hope you have a nice day. You can see that the um, handler input had the uh, variable set here and then it required um, the response page. So there's a very simple example of a JSP in action. So using a JSP and our servlet. This is uh, how web pages were built back in 1999. The underlying technology is still in use today, although we have much more sophisticated tools to work with. But this is a good start to see how uh, web browsers and web servers are running the, the Java application. So here's what I'd like you to do for the assignment here. Um, let's take this form and dress it up. So we got first and last name. Create some more variables. So let's say, let's give your age and maybe your birth date and a few other things such as your IQ. Uh, kind of a profile of a customer maybe, and then let's echo the responses back to the page.